Hi, I'm Roger Margolis, Research Director at O'Reilly. I'm here with Tony Salvador from Intel. And you just gave a talk. I tell you, it really hit a lot of things I'm really interested in because you brought up social science as being an important part of data. So one, I appreciate that, and it's a topic I'm trying to get more into. Maybe just talk a little about how that fit in. It's not common in the data space to hear people so explicit about that. Well, you know, I think that any time there's a new technology or a new way of doing things that comes into play, it pushes all of the issues that, that we are as a society. Right? It changes relationships of power, who has power over whom. It changes relationships of recourse, who can do what to whom. It changes issues of who can watch whom, right? who can watch who doing what. Right? So all of those things change, and we don't think about them all the time very explicitly because they're things that we just get used to. And it's kind of on social scientists to make that relevant and to make it actionable and to start thinking about what we can do to take account of those issues. Right, I sometimes think of the definition of technology is what you don't notice. Yeah. Because it's so, you take it for granted, right, that it's, that it's always there. So, as research, you're the research director at Intel, I'm actually the research director at O'Reilly. Uh -huh. so, but it's a very different uh, uh, scale <laughs> of, uh, of work. Um, what, what do you use that, that tells you where things are going? Your, your stuff is everywhere. Like, you're looking at the world, what are your sensors? You know, it's interesting. Um, our best sensors, I actually think, are our people, the people in my team. The, uh, we read widely, uh, we, we think broadly about what's going on, we question anytime somebody says something. We, we try to think about what it means when they say something, what perspective they're coming from. So a good example of that is, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, the secretary of the UN, I think it was Kofi Annan at the time, said, oh, you know, computers are good for development. And our first question is, really? What makes you say that? In what way is it good for development? What's your evidence for that? And what does it mean? And we actually started doing a big body of work to think about, well, how does computation actually support development? And what does that all mean? And you know, we found some really interesting things about that. But we question everything. So our sensors, the best sensors we have are our people. And we, and we hire for that, and we keep ourselves together, and we're pretty tight. Uh, I think then you start looking out into the world, which is, I think, where your question really was going. And we, you know, we look at all the popular press we can. We're really widely read that way. Um, and then we do our field work. And we just go, and we understand deeply how people are living, what they're doing, the kinds of things they're questioning, what makes life difficult for them, what might makes life really joyful. And we start pulling that together and thinking about, well, what can we do new, and how do we actually drive the, the technologies to support that. Okay, you had talked about belief, let me make sure I get it right, belief-driven data mm -hmm. and data-driven belief. Oh. It sound, again, it sounds like the whole of sciences angle there. So, talk about it and like how, how you're incorporating that into what you're doing. Well, it, that's, that's, a, that's a really interesting little uh, turn of phrase, that, yeah. and I'm not very good at turns of phrase, but that's one that I actually like. Um, so there's belief-driven data, and often what we find is that we have a particular belief, and then we go out and seek the data to find that. And th th that's a fallacy, right? Because you know, if we just sort of invent something, nowadays with everything available on the internet, it's really not that hard to imagine we can go find an argument to support the issue we want to support. What we really need to understand is how to think about data to drive our beliefs. How, do, how does what's actually happening in the world right, actually inform what we should do? And then there's all kinds of social science issues in that, right? On the one hand, there's all the issues about believing data and understanding data and having being literate with data and understanding how to make a decision with right. data. There's all of that. There's also how we think cognitively, right? There's been all these this great work from uh, Kahneman and Tversky and these. these I love Kahneman. Uh, yeah, they're awesome. Where, you know, judgments and biases under uncertainty and all of this work. We think in interesting ways, and one of those ways, for example, is to is to to suggest well. Uh, what we saw last is what's in our mind, and that's what we think is going to happen next. Or at least that's what we think is going to have a high probability of happening next, right? That's not right, right? Not when we think about it, and, but we have to think about it. And so I try to, to think about how do we move towards a belief, a data-driven belief system, right? Uh, because we have a lot of data and we should start making use of it. That sounds good. I think that if there's a fundamental thing, is like, like kind of asking the right question, and that seems to relate, exactly. to, relate to that. So a personal data economy right. sounds a little like I know about quantified self. I know I wish I could get more of the pe data people have on me so I could look at stuff. What are you talking about when you're... Uh, well, an economy is a system of exchange. A uh, personal data economy would be a system of exchange based on personal data. Uh, we believe that we're, we individually are the only people who should have access to all of our personal data. Right. 
we have associations with companies for sure, and we should share that, right? But we should share that, right? And then we should be able to take all of our data, amass it together, and actually have it securely circulate in interesting ways that we can get value from that, and we can participate in an economy around virtual data. Uh, I'm sorry, around personal data, and 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 participate in the virtual space. And that's where I got confused. Yeah. The the. Uh, we do this in the physical space. We do this with companies like eBay or Etsy or even Airbnb, right? But we need to also do this with our personal data. It's our asset. And if we are going to participate broadly, if we are going to address the issues we talked about earlier about power and transparency and surveillance and all of that kind of things, it's our data. We have to make the most use of it. We have to acknowledge that we can share it securely, without identity, all those kinds of things. We have to work towards that. So Intel has enormous resources. You've got this team who's thinking about people problems as much as anything. What problem would you most like to solve? Um, you know, it's interesting. I think the intent of your question, I'm going to say, I think that the decline of coral reefs in the oceans would be a, a problem I would like to understand what's going on. Uh, we don't understand nearly as much about our oceans as we should. This is my own opinion. Uh, and I think if we could have a, a, a big data sort of challenge or a project to understand why are coral reefs in decline, how do we actually stop that and get the world to participate, that'd be awesome. I think another way of actually taking your question though is what, what are some of the problems of big data that we actually have to resolve? And, I, and I'm going to have to sort of go towards the transparency and trust issue. I think that we've had too many issues where lack of transparency has bred a lack of trust and societies thrive on trust. If we don't have that, things break down. And so we need to think about transparency in big data. We need to think about how to open up those systems, open up those data so people can inspect them, know what's going on, so that we can actually trust in the systems that we're actually starting to build. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. And uh, I, you know, I think Intel's lucky to have someone like you guys working on Thanks. this stuff. I awesome. really appreciate your the discussion today. You bet. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Take care.